historic gold rush town, Grass Valley. Nowadays, we boast numerous small businesses, high-tech industries, Sierra Community College, thriving art, music, and theater scenes, and a quaint downtown. Grass Valley remains a very busy place and a draw for outdoor enthusiasts, tourists, and retired folks. That's a wonderful area. I hear your vote counts. From anywhere should get a chance to come see historic Grass Valley. It's wonderful. The creativity that runs through this whole area and just lights people up. This is just a wonderful community. It's a great community to live and work and raise a family and there's so much to offer here. It's a very eclectic community. I love like how close we are to all these outdoor activities and just like nature in general. In all this coming and going, there is a treasure that has long been forgotten and neglected. It's what brought people here in the first place. Before the pioneers and the gold rush, Nisinan and other Maidu tribes thrived along what we commonly know as Wolf Creek. Yes, a creek runs through Grass Valley. Deer? Wolf? <laughs> wolf? I don't know. It's not Deer Creek. That goes through Nevada ah. City. Is it Wolf Creek then? It is Wolf, wolf Creek. I was right. It is? Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek. Ow. Oh, wait, Wolf Creek. So do you know what watershed we're in? No. What does that mean? No. Part of? Uh, the, which watershed? Like what, like what river does Wolf Creek flow into? Oh, the Bear River? No oh, the bear, way. Bear, the Bear, bear River. river. The exactly. Bear River. It seems like most people in town don't really know about Wolf Creek, though. It's invisible. From the headwaters on Banner Mountain, Wolf Creek runs through town, then veers south before the confluence with the Bear River. That place is Grass Valley, smack dab in the Bear River watershed. The Bear itself then runs into the Feather River. The Feather runs into the Sacramento River, which joins with the San Joaquin to enter the San Francisco Bay. Wolf Creek is part of this major California water system. There are a lot of great things about Wolf Creek but it also suffers from the negative ramifications of urbanization and the historical legacy of mining. However, there are many restoration opportunities that can help make it a more healthy creek. For 160 years, the creek has been used, abused, and neglected. It's been channelized, buildings and roads hover right up to the bank, and freeway construction condemned the creek to disappear underground. The history of that seems to be in concrete to you know, use that frame it, of reference, it is cast in concrete. Apparently, the, the, the understanding is that it's a retaining wall for the freeway down there and there's a whole lot of engineering. In close proximity to the creek and along its tributaries, the following toxins have been found and well-documented. Asbestos, arsenic, yellow boy, carbon tetrachloride, and other heavy metals. concrete and fences and it didn't seem natural but another spot was um, it had a lot of plants and life and I want to make sure that um, everywhere around it would be like that. We're doing uh, a chalk art mural to show that Wolf Creek runs under Grass Valley. We, we kind of we knew that the creek by our school was Wolf Creek but we didn't know that it ran through here. It's not where animals can have their habitat, and we want animals to have their habitat. We welcome Wolf Creek Alliance, and, and, and we also really welcome what you're doing. I mean, Thank you're doing you. a very good thing. I was born and raised here. We used to run up and down the creek, and, and we fished in the creek. It was brown trout, wasn't it? brown trout. Now I understand people still actually catch brown trout occasionally in the creek.
Many people in the Grass Valley community see benefits to having a parkway along Wolf Creek. A walking trail through Grass Valley. It really sparked a lot of excitement. And we had a lot of people come out at those early meetings where there were some um, public input uh, as to what they wanted. But I think the best thing we could do for a whole little community of Grass Valley, Nevada City, is develop the trail systems. Bicycle trails, walking trails, so we're not dependent on our silly cars all the time. Yeah, I think it'd be tremendous. I'm a, I'm a, a bicyclist and a mountain biker and a hiker, and uh, I think that's wonderful. So, no, I'm a real proponent for trails, pedestrian, bike, run. Yeah, anything where you can get out and enjoy it. Did you know the city has already approved a conceptual plan for that? <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah. I would have to know more about it and know exactly where it's at to know, to have an educated opinion on whether it's a good idea or not. We could have students who are docents and, and literally walk out and teach people about native flora and fauna that they've been studying. Um, so just a lot of potential. And pre-K-8, so our little pre-Kers that are at Charter all the way through our middle schoolers, could all be part of it. And I would yeah. support any way we could do it, whether it's a section at a time, like you just say, starting with the paths, and if there was a way over a period of years or a period of time to open that creek up down for a half mile, or, or maybe that's too much, I don't know, right. um, but that would be a great stretch, uh, even a quarter mile maybe, right. um, could make a big difference in downtown Grass Valley. The proposed parkway itself begins at the corner of Idaho, Maryland and Sutton Road and runs 2.2 miles down to the North Star Mining Museum at Glen Jones Park. This is a really wonderful hub to begin the whole parkway concept. Um, this area will be eventually developed all around here and it's a great place to start to um, emanate from here a, a, a number of trails that go into Brunswick they go into the Loma Rica area, and they go all the way down to the southern end of the, of the city along uh, where the old mining museum is. Um, and if you follow the creek along that way, that we actually have a conservation easement that goes uh, about a half a mile down the creek, and uh, we're, we're in the process of building a trail on that portion of it. So we can really connect this area with that lower area of the city. We are actively seeking grants and donors to fund the design work, engineering reports, environmental review, permits, and contracts for implementation. Many communities here in California and across the country have brought new life to their downtowns by restoring their creeks. The Mission Plaza area is now a thriving economic environment with restaurants and art galleries overlooking the creek that replaced a once all but dead strip of downtown San Luis Obispo. The Prince Memorial Greenway project restored nearly a mile of Santa Rosa Creek in the heart of downtown Santa Rosa. The path system is now heavily used by pedestrians and cyclists. Nevada County is benefiting from trails created in Nevada City and beyond. The Tribute Trail has been the outcome of coordinated effort from all kinds of different people. The folks who live next to the trail, the folks that want to walk on the trail, the city, state, and federal agencies that own pieces of the trail, the philanthropic community that helped pay for pieces of the trail, is knitting together a quilt of goodwill. People think it should be easy to build a trail, but believe me, you, you touch people in, at their private property, they're very concerned. You want to have a safe place to walk your children, so you don't want it to be on the edge of a cliff or with dangerous people. It's very hard to build a trail, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished here. The Wolf Creek Community Alliance and Parkway supporters have initiated a series of meetings with city personnel, property owners, civic groups, nonprofits, schools, and individuals to spread the word and gather momentum. On behalf of the creek and community, join dedicated people who are ready to roll up their sleeves and find a creek in common.